Profiler stage provides direct access to all switching and control elements on the front panel. The foot switches on the lower half of the panel are organized in two rows. The display, with its various knobs and buttons, is placed above. The signal chain is shown in one row on the right, and above it there are two foot switches, one for the looper and one for the tuner. Let's take a closer look at the connections which are positioned on the back of the unit. Let's start on the left side with the input jack. This is where you connect your guitar. The outputs are a little further to the right. XLR and jack connectors are available for the main output signal, all in stereo with left and right jacks. Use them to connect the profiler stage with the front of house mixer, the stage box or the audio interface if you want to record. In the lower row are the two jacks for the monitor out. Also in stereo with two connectors, the monitor out can of course also be used in mono with one connector. This is where you connect your active speaker or the amp for the stage. The headphone jack comes with a mini jack right next to it. The ground lift switches for each output can be found in the output menu. The profiler stage has two different operating modes which can be selected with the buttons on the left. The browser stores all of your rigs. In the factory default state, the rigs are sorted alphabetically by name, but they can also be sorted by other criteria. You can change that by pressing soft button 2 above the display. Perform mode is designed for stage use. You can create and store 125 performances, and in each performance, up to five rigs can be loaded into the so-called slots by turning the browse knob. Each slot can be called up with the rig buttons 1 to 5. In this view, the name of the performance and the number are shown at the top of the display. The name of the current rig is in the middle, and the slots with the available rigs are shown at the bottom. The names of the slots can be changed by the user to match the specific application. A performance can be set up to represent a song, and you place the rigs for the different parts of the song in slots 1 to 5. To navigate between performances, you can use the up-down buttons in the second row. It's a good idea to create a performance that represents your standard sounds. In my case, this would be a clean sound in slot 1, a slightly distorted one in slot 2, Number 3 has a bit more gain, but still reacts well to the velocity. <laughs> Slot number 4 is a classic rock guitar sound. The fifth slot is occupied by a lead sound, which is already a bit louder. I also pre-configured specific effects for each slot, which I can switch on and off with the effect buttons like on a pedal board. The signal chain is shown on the right side. Active models are illuminated. After the input section, the stomp modules A to D can be assigned with typical preamp stomp box effects like wah, compressor, booster or overdrive. Next is the stack section with amplifier and cabinet. The effect section offers four additional modules for effects marked as X, modulation, delay and reverb. This is only a rough structure, you can apply any effect to any module, even a couple of delays in series if you like. The final section is the output section. The effect modules are also shown in the display. 
the abbreviations tell you which effects are used, and any active effects are highlighted in black. The numbers in the upper row indicate which foot switch can be used to switch the effects on and off. The operating concept for editing is quite simple. You press the edit button, then the edit menu of the previously selected module is shown in the display. If you want to edit a different module, press the button of that module. The parameters are shown in the lower part of the display and the values can be changed with the knobs underneath the display. As you can see here, there are four pages available in the AMP menu and we are currently on page one. With the page buttons, you can navigate to the next page and set the next parameters. The profiler stage does not have a dedicated EQ module in the AMP stack section. Instead, the equalizer can be found in the AMP menu on page four. However, you have quick access to the EQ in the main menu. To leave the edit mode, I press the exit button to return to the main menu, and I find the EQ in the lower part of the display, where I can always modify the settings with the four soft knobs underneath the display. To the left and right of the display, you will find two controls that always have the same function. The gain controls the degree of distortion of the amp profile used. On the right side of the display, the master volume control controls the volume for the main out, monitor out, and headphone out. You can determine which output is controlled, but more on that later. Any edited values are saved by pressing the store button. If you are in perform mode, you can choose the destination where you want to save the performance. You select the destination with the first parameter knob. Then press store again to enter the name. You select the letters with the browse knob and advance to the next character with the page buttons. Then press store again and the settings are saved. In browse mode, the whole thing is similar. You also press the store button, then you'll be asked if you want to save a new rig with the settings. Just change the name or overwrite the current rig. Choose an option and press the corresponding soft button. Then enter your name again and press store again. You can use foot switches 1 to 4 in the second row to control the status of effect modules. To do this, proceed as follows. In this rig, I want to switch the delay on and off using button number 4. To achieve this, I hold the button of the delay module and press effect button 4 at the same time. And that's it. Now the delay module can be switched on and off with the foot switch. When the effect is activated, the white LED next to the foot switch lights up. The tap button at the bottom right is used to set the tempo for tempo-based effects. The white LED next to the foot switch will blink to indicate the current tempo. Detailed information on the tempo function in the profiler can also be found in a separate video in the Kemper tutorial channel. In the upper half, there are two more foot switches. The right one controls the tuner. If this is activated, the reference pitch can be changed in the tuner menu with the first parameter knob. If you want to mute the signal during the tuning process, you should check the mute signal box in the upper left corner. The left foot switch controls the looper, which can then be operated with rig buttons one to five. There is also a video on this in the Kemper tutorial channel. The tap, tuner and looper buttons can also be assigned to other functions if required. Press the system button and navigate to the user interface two page. Then press soft button three, button assignment. Now the assignment of the function for the three foot switches can be changed with the parameter controls. You can copy single modules from one rig and paste them into another. To do this, hold down the button for the corresponding module for a moment 
until the clipboard display appears on the screen. To copy the settings, press soft button 2, copy stomp. To return to the main menu, click the exit button and select the rig in which you want to paste the content of the clipboard. Then hold down the button of the module where the effect should be copied to. When the clipboard appears in the display, press soft button 3, paste stomp effect. If you want to copy the complete stack, just press the amplifier and cabinet buttons at the same time. If you want to load an effect into a module, press the edit button and then the button of the desired module. An empty module will show empty. Now you can use the type and browse controls to load effects and their presets. Pressing the type knob once will display the preset menu. There are three columns, the category on the left, the effect type in the middle, and the available presets in the right column. Presets are certain settings of effects that can be used as a starting point to make it easier to create your own personal settings. For example, to find the perfect chorus effect, select the chorus category. This is done by holding down the type slider and turning it at the same time. Let go and just turn the type knob to select the effect type. The middle column lists all types under the chorus category. I take the Vintage Chorus, and then I can select a preset with the Browse slider. Pressing the Browse slider loads the preset. If you have activated the Auto Load option, the preset will be loaded automatically. Before you go any further, you should configure the output menu for your connected equipment. For using the stage live, the first four pages of the output menu are the most important. Here is a typical application. The profiler is connected to the PA via the main out, and you have your own amp or active speaker on stage, which you have connected to the monitor out. Press the output button and go to page one, output source. This is where the signals are assigned to the individual outputs. If you use the main output with two connectors, master stereo should be selected. If only one main out socket is used, no matter which one, you should select master mono. The monitor output for your stage speaker is the same. Master stereo, if both monitor out connectors are used. Master mono, if only one is in use. I tend to have the minus 12 dB option activated for the main out to make sure that the signal does not clip any external mixer input. The monitor cab off function should be activated if you have a regular guitar cab and external power amp connected to the monitor out for your personal monitoring. In this case, the internal cab simulation will be deactivated for the monitor out only. The signal at the main out is not affected by this option. Navigate to page 2 with the page buttons to adjust the volume for the individual outputs. Set the main output to the right position, i.e. 0 dB. The level should be compatible with the live digital mixer because the 12 dB reduction is already activated. Monitor volume, your volume on stage, can be adjusted according to your needs and it makes sense to link this to the master volume knob by checking the monitor out link option. I deactivated the volume link for the main out because the level of the main out should not be changed after sound check, so that the front of house technician at the mixer always receives the same signal level. Let's go to the system settings to make sure that the LED collar around the master volume represents the value of the monitor out. Press System, go to the user interface page, and set Volume LED collar to Monitor Volume. On the next page, you will find the output EQ for the monitor out. This is a global equaliser for your stage amp. Adjust it to your taste. 
On the following page, you'll find the same EQ for the main outputs, which I prefer to leave in a neutral setting. On page 5, you'll find the ground lift switches for the corresponding outputs Send 1, Send 2, Monitor Out and Main Out. If you encounter any humming, check the box at the specific output. If there is no hum, the ground lift switches should not be activated. External effect devices can be connected via the send and return sockets. There are two effect loops with stereo returns, which means you can also use stereo effect devices. The send will be connected to the input of the effect device, the outputs of the effect will be connected to the return connectors. The loops can be positioned anywhere in the signal path. Send 1 can also be used as an output, for example if you want to record the direct analog guitar signal in addition to the amp profile. Settings for this can be made in the output menu. The return can also be used as an aux in, for example to connect an MP3 player for practicing. To use an external effect pedal that's connected to the send and return of the profiler, you have to assign an effect loop to a module in the signal chain. To do so, press the edit button and the button of the desired effect module. Press and simultaneously turn the type knob until the effect loop category appears at the end of the list. Then select loop mono for mono effects, loop stereo for stereo effects, or loop distortion for overdrive or distortion pedals. With loop mono and stereo, you can set mix, ducking, and volume. The distortion loop only has volume. If you have connected your effect device to send or return one, you have to select use upper loop. For any effect device connected to send or return two, select use lower loop. The profiler stage has four inputs for external expression pedals or foot switches. Pedal 1 to pedal 4. You can use them to connect pedals to control volume, wah or morphing. For an expression pedal, a stereo jack cable is required. For a switch, a mono jack cable is sufficient. To use additional expression pedals on pedal inputs 1 through 4, the parameter control functions must be set accordingly in the profiler. Press the pedal button to do so. I have an expression pedal connected to pedal input 1 to control the volume. Press the pedals button and navigate to the pedal 1 page. You can see that all parameters are already set correctly. Function is volume pedal and you can control the volume with the pedal instantly. The profiler has a built-in function that activates the tuner as soon as the volume pedal is in the heel position. This allows you to tune your guitar quickly, even during a short break and saves you from having to switch on the tuner with a dedicated tuner foot switch. You can even assign a different function to the tuner foot switch if you like. If you're irritated by this change of display, simply deactivate the tuner at volume zero option and the display will not change if you set the volume pedal completely to the heel position. If you want to control another function with pedal one, choose another value for function. If you want to control a wah effect with the pedal, you can connect the pedal to port 3, which is already configured as a wah pedal input, and you don't have to make any further settings in the pedals menu. All you need to do is place a wah effect type in slot A, where it generally makes the most sense. Press the edit button and the module A button. To load the effect preset, use the type slider to select the wah category and the wah wah effect type. Then use the browse control to select a preset, for example, the cry preset, which is a good starting point for pedal wah sounds. The wah effect is set to turn off as soon as the pedal is not moved. For a static wah sound that is fixed at a certain pedal position, Select Bypass at Heel in the WAR menu on page 2 and the WAR effect will stay active until it is parked in the heel position. Mm -hmm. 
Many guitarists use the Mission EP1 with the profiler. The pedal has an expression function with an additional toe switch, so it can be operated like a normal wah pedal and can also activate the wah effect. To control the on-off state of the wah and control it with the pedal, the following settings have to be made. The pedal is connected to the connectors 2 and 4. Output 1 on the Mission pedal with connection pedal 4 on the profiler stage and output 2 on the mission pedal with connection pedal 2 on the profiler stage. The output 2 on the mission pedal is responsible for the switching function. To set this up, enter the pedal menu. On page pedal 2, select mono switch for mode and stomp A on off for switch tip. Now I can switch module A on and off with the toe switch on the pedal. On the pedal 4 page, I select pedal type 1 for mode and wah pedal for function. If you move the pedal, the black bar at the top of the display should move along and fill up completely. If the bar is not completely filled when the pedal is fully depressed, press soft button 1 and move the pedal completely up and down again to calibrate the expression pedal successfully. Of course, it is crucial that a wah effect is loaded and activated in Module A. To control the effect with this pedal, like with an analog wah pedal, you have to adjust some settings in the Effect menu. Press Edit, followed by the button for Module A, and navigate to Page 2. Set Pedal Mode to On. Now the wire effect can be controlled by moving the pedal. You can also use this expression pedal to control the volume when the wah effect is not activated. So it's a wah or volume pedal. To do this, you have to activate the wah pedal to volume option on the pedal links page. More detailed information about using expression pedals can be found in a separate video on the Kemper Tutorial channel. Morphing allows you to save two different settings of any effects or stack parameters you're using within a rig. The bass sound is loaded when you select the rig, while the so-called morph sound represents the second setting. You can move back and forth between these two sounds with an expression pedal. The morphing function is pre-assigned to pedal input 2 at the factory. The morphing function can also be triggered with the rig buttons. The first click loads the bass sound, and if you press the rig button again, the morph sound is loaded. The upper LED on the rig button lights up to indicate the morph status. A popular use for morphing is to control the degree of distortion using an expression pedal. For example, you could switch from a rather undistorted rhythm sound to a crunchy lead sound, including all intermediate stages in between. To achieve this, proceed as follows. Select a rig with the desired amount of distortion in the bass sound. Then press the Morph button. 
Now the morph sound is loaded and the upper LED on the rig button lights up. No morphing parameters have been programmed into any of the factory rigs, so the sound doesn't change yet. Now use the gain control to adjust the degree of distortion for the morph sound. An M appears next to the value. This means that this parameter is being controlled by morphing. Now you can use the expression pedal to adjust the degree of distortion between the bass and the morph sounds. All parameters in any active effect modules, as well as any parameters in the stack menu, can be controlled by morphing. The sky is the limit. Here is an example of a delay which I configured so that the effect is not audible in the bass sound, and can then be faded in with the expression pedal as I move towards the morph sound. Like the rig button, the morph button can also be used to switch between the bass and morph sounds. Always watch the LED on the rig button. The bass sound is indicated by the lower LED. Now press the edit button, followed by the button for the delay module. The effects menu appears in the display. Navigate to page 1 and set the mix control to 0%. This means that the delay effect is not audible. Then press the morph button. The morph sound will be loaded and the upper LED on the rig button will light up. Now use the mix knob to set the desired effect amount of the delay for the morph sound. Again, the M appears next to the value. Now I have a dry bass sound with a low level of distortion, which can then be faded with the expression pedal to a highly distorted sound with delay. <laughs> For more examples of what can be achieved by morphing effect parameters, please watch the dedicated tutorial video on this topic. In the upper right corner, you'll find the two USB ports. One for a USB stick to create and restore backups of your settings. The second USB socket can be connected to a computer to communicate with the Rig Manager application, which helps you to manage your rigs and performances, make backups, and have access to the Rig Exchange, a platform where you can load rigs from other users and also upload your own. It makes sense to use a USB stick for backups. Even if you want to transfer data to another profiler, the easiest way is to back it up on the USB stick. The stick has to be formatted by the profiler. Plug it into the USB port on the back. The USB stick will be recognized automatically and you'll be asked if you want to format the stick. Press soft button 2 to start the process. When the process is finished, press OK. Now you can use the stick with the profiler. When you plug it back in, the display will show the option USB stick. If you press soft button 3, a selection menu will appear. To create a complete backup, press soft button 1, backup or restore, and then soft button 2, backup. Now a complete backup of the profiler content is created on the USB stick. This usually takes a moment. For security reasons, you should back up the profiler content to the USB stick from time to time. 
If you want to import an old backup into the profiler, press Restore on the second selection page and select the corresponding backup.